Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Marion Catholic Stadium, the Marion Catholic Colts against the Red Tornadoes from Mount Carmel. A, a strange afternoon game for the Red Tornadoes, usually once every two years, unless we make it to some playoffs, Warren. Yep. <laughs> yep. We, uh, We've never have. I mean, we were all collectively talking about this, and there's never any really good memories here as we come as we come onto the field here for the start of play up here at Colt Stadium. I guess it's either the afternoon now. Also, it rained heavily for two days prior to actually three days prior to this. So, if there's any problems with the field, and it does look in good condition, Jose, but if there is a problem, it's going to affect us more than it will them. I think with our speed. Yeah, I think the outside game will be affected a little bit more with, with the way this field, but it actually looks pretty good, Warren. I, we were out on it a little bit before the game, and it's, it seems pretty solid. If it holds up during the day and we don't get any more rain, I think it's going to be all right. A strange occurrence occurred here, too, coming to uh, Marion Catholic Stadium. Jose Gonzalo in the box with us today. Yes. Instead yes. of Wayne, Wayne has his daughter getting married, and uh, welcome, Jose. Thank you, Robert and Warren. It, you, you realize <laughs> that it is an experiment, and if by halftime I can't deal with this, I'm going to be back down on the field. Uh, He's already hedging his bets, folks. Wayne, no more marriages, please. You only have one daughter. hope she stays married for the rest of her life. <laughs> <laughs> He's hoping that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm glad, glad the rain held up for him anyway. Captains meet at the center of the field. 71, Dan Dalkus, number 60, Jason Malakoski, 75, Jonathan Els, and number 80, Chris Cuff. The other captain of the Red Tornadoes, 58, Mike Sinkovich. And we're at a height worn where we'll never know who the Marion captains are. No, no, <laughs> you're absolutely <laughs> right. I was just I was just thinking, you know, you see four captains out there, they have two or three, and we're bigger than each one of them. I mean, if that's a sign, we're in for a good afternoon. Of course, Marion Colts uh, come into this game four and one, uh, having a great season so far, and they usually do. They're a strong program, they're a powerful program. They're playing out in District 11 in AA, and they're a team to be reckoned with today, and they're playing on their home field, as I said, has always been a problem for us. We come in 4-1, and one, of course. The big story here, we come off a loss last week to downtown Central Catholic Vikings. How do we respond? What, you know, what's on the team's mind as they come into this afternoon game? Those are all questions that are going to be answered very shortly. You mentioned the loss, Warren, to downtown Central Catholic. If anybody noticed last night, they beat Hazleton 49-7, to and as you know, Hazleton's been up and down, mostly down, but they are a quad A school up there, and uh, Allentown just handled them totally, where uh, Marion's loss was in overtime to Shemokin, and we know a good Shemokin team, and the thing that was that is really interesting is they held them to three first downs. I mean, they had no stats whatsoever, uh, Shemokin did, and still came out and won the game. Red Tornadoes will kick off. I didn't really see who won the toss there, so we know Red Tornadoes kicking off deep for the Marion Catholic Colts. Nowitzki, number 12, <clears throat> number 18, Barrasso, and Barrasso played a heck of a game last, last year against us, and number two, Tim Matula. Head coach for the Colts, Stan Dentkowski. Dukoski. 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 That's the way they were saying it up here on their side. Because he had changed his name. Right. It's not Dick a new last year. It's not a new coach. Right. Sinkovic with the kick. Barrasso picks it up on about the six or seven yard line and carries it up right about to the 28 yard line. 26. First down and 10. Colts from the 26. Well, this is, this is a little bit different Colt team than we've seen in the last three years. Of course, they had Andrews at quarterback for the past three right. years, and, and he threw the ball every place you could think of and then some. Although they do pass, they're not a, a completely running team. They will not pass nearly as much as they had in the past years. There's a the motion, man. Looks on the slant to number 12, incomplete to Nowitzki, but uh, playbook out of Allentown Central Catholic on that play, Jose. Exactly. It looked exactly like what Coach... Morgans did last week against us with the inside slant, and it was there. He just overthrew it just very slightly. Well, he was also in some traffic there. I think uh, Novitsky was short-arming short -arming a little bit because there was going to be a major collision coming his way. Out of the eye formation, Joe Ott at fullback, number 33. Corey Balliott, number 38 at the tailback. The Balliott tries going up the middle. <coughs> Mike Sinkovich, number 58, down on the bottom of the pile. Now one, one thing for sure, Bob, is that 
I can say this, and, and you know, sometimes you get in trouble saying this, but I'm going to say it surely that you're not going to run up the middle on this team. No one has, and I don't believe Marion Catholic is going to be the first team to do it this year. The middle is completely closed off. You're not going to get around the side a little bit, get around the ends, or throw some short passes. You're not going to move the ball. Third down, 10 yards to go. Trips right for Marion, tries it over the middle. Incomplete to number 19, had him wide open, or was 18. it 89? Eight, that's 18. Oh, 18 again, which is Justin Barrasso. A punting situation for the Colts, but uh, wide open in the middle of the field. Yeah, that, that time that was a nice pass and a nicely run pattern. He just simply dropped the ball in the middle of the field, but that's something I think we're going to see them come back to for the end of the, this, this game is out. Leitzel will kick number seven, the quarterback, and when your quarterback kicks, you always have a chance of a fake. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, and this one's going to go in the direction of Sebas. Bounces on the 35, and will be down by the Colts on the 35-yard line. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. You see, that bounce was, a, was I think, a product of the, of the field being just so wet. Uh, didn't go anywhere, just kind of bumped up in the air and, and, and flattened itself out. Now, the field, as we said, under heavy rain conditions for a period of two days prior, but it does look, except for some spots right in the middle, like it's in excellent condition today for this game. 39-yard punt that time. I hope we don't see a whole bunch of those like last week either, guys. Tries Veach up the middle. Big play made by number 33, Joe Ott, the linebacker. Also on the bottom of the pile, number 17 in there for the Colts. I didn't have him on my list, so we'll have to come down and get him for you. Randoka. He's playing for somebody, Warren. Somebody is not starting on defense who was supposed to. Gain of about three yards for the Red Tornadoes. Sebas keeps the ball to the right side and gets only about a yard. Third down, seven yards to go. What time that was Horvath that made the play. Now Horvath's a kid that we had heard about. He's a guy you want to watch. He's number 71. He's playing on the left side of the defensive line for Marion Catholic, and he was a name that we had talked about at Supper Club, so you want to keep your eye open for him during the game. Sabus, back to pass. Big rush from the end. Nick does a good job of getting himself free. Looks at Smitty breaking downfield. Intercepted by number 12 on the interception, which was Neil Nowitzki. First down, Colts. Big rush from the end position, number 17 uh, for the Colts, which was Tony Radoka again, and, and he must be starting a defensive end in place of Alex Vitti. So, Radoka, good job by him to get by everybody and put the rush on Sebas. That was a busted play, Rob, that time. Smitty adjusted on his route and went deep, and the, the ball just sort of hung up a little bit, but... Well, there's a real, make up for that. real stiff breeze blowing from the right to the left. Tries it up the middle to Ott, the fullback, Terry Meyer and Steve Sinkovich with the initial hits. And Jeff Evans was down under there too. The dog. We have enough people calling for us up here, Jose. We'll have a lot of tackles on this side. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing how everybody has a different view. Yeah, I know. Second down, seven yards to go. Lights old. With split backs. Passing situation. Looks over in the flat. Hits his receiver, but he's down on the ground. Number 21, Ryan Wertman with the catch. Gain of about maybe four yards. It'll be a third down and four. Three yards. Three. About third and three, it looks like. I'm mean, going to attempt to check the, the uh, third and four on the scoreboard. The scoreboard's like eight miles away for me right now. Well, we have to <laughs> lean out. 8.58 left in the first quarter. I'm hoping they play it pretty much on one side here today. <laughs> we'll be safer. Nowitzki comes in motion. They're going to run behind him with the uh, tailback, Corey Balliot. That's just pick up a one yard. They're not even close to a first down. Chris Cuff came from the other side of the field that time. Cuff and Terry Meyer finishes them off. You know, I get gun shy up here now. Well, right. Jose gets all the tackles, you know, and, and who makes the tackle. I'm, I'm gun shy of what you're, name I'm going to call, you He's know? intimidating us up I, yeah, there he now. he is. He is. No, please. We're not used to accuracy. You play your regular game. Forget I'm here, please. <laughs> Valiant back to punt. Or, I'm sorry, Lytle back to punt. Rush from Jeff Evans. Big sailor. 
taken by Veach on about the 19, 18 yard line. Find some running room up to about the 24. First down and 10 red tornadoes from the 24 yard line. Excellent pressure that time downfield by number 38, Corey Ballia. Two great punts in a row and it brings back me memories which were bad of last week when Allentown Central Catholic's punter kept us pinned in our own zone all the time. This guy can boot the ball just as well. That's a 47 yard punt. Oh my goodness. Well, there's a, as again, the great breeze blowing when you're going from right to left. Sebas to Veach, up the middle. Oh, it's Bailey up the middle. Tackle made by number 71, Brian Horvath. Gain of about maybe two yards on the play. Good on-field coverage from our camera crew here. Sebas to Veach. Gain probably about maybe six yards up to about the 32-yard line. 3rd down, 3 yards to go. Malakoski, 47 Sinkovic and 1 Terry Meyer come into the game. Usually a power situation for the Red Tornadoes. Timeout called. It's an official's timeout warrant for a helmet. A lot of a lot of feeling around going here right now. Both both squads trying to figure out what's going to work, what's not, what the defensive linemen look like for each one. Malcor Malaria, of course, I know that Coming out of last week's game, Mount Carmel area, I'm sure, wants to, wants to think he can start running the ball again. It was not successful running last week, and I know they want to establish a running game against the Colts today. Coming at the cheater backs. Great play by number 18. Better play by Veach to get the first down and more. He's down the sideline and carrying the ball still hard to the 46-yard line. Great run by Jonathan Veach. Barrasso with a good defensive play to make that break up there. Nobody blocked him, Jose, and you have a, a ton of, of, of people there to block those guys. You're right, Bob. Johnny wow. just made a great, great move to get to the outside when he bounced it out originally. Now, he's a hard runner. I mean, people, people only see speed with him, but when he gets in, in traffic and gets in tight, he'll take you on as, as much as any fullback's going to do. That was a nice 22-yard run by Johnny. Little hook. Incomplete to Paracella. They're switching out of their uh, five-man front, too, Warren. You can see them switching into a four, or that was actually a six-man line that yeah. time on defense. But one of the things we had seen two years ago, if you remember up here, it was a tight game for the longest time. They must have played seven different defenses in the first half alone. So one thing, one thing that they're not used to doing is staying in one defense. They'll move everybody around. They adjust right before the ball snap. So it's really hard to tell what it is they're trying to do. Veach off the left side. Down to about the 43-yard line. I missed the tackle. Looked like 33. Joe Ott, the linebacker, again on the tackle. Six minutes left in the first quarter. Third down, seven yards to go. Lone back, Al Bailey in the backfield for the Red Tornadoes. Sebas rolls to his left. It's going to be a screen pass. Now he looks downfield. Paracella intercepted, no, incomplete. Almost in and out of the hands of Paracella. Barrasso got the ball, and or I'm sorry, Wortman got the ball, and it was incomplete. Fourth down and about eight yards to go. Nice pass that time with Sebas on the run under heavy pressure. He, uh, he made a nice throw that time. It's a little more difficult when he's rolling left. Warren to, tro to throw the ball downfield like that. He, he did a good job even getting it off. Snaps back to Sinkovich. Nice kick by Mike uh, Steve Sinkovich. Oh, big hit there and still on his feet. A good run by number 18, Barrasso. Josh Paracella, 29 on his feet. First down, Colts. 38-yard punt for Steve that time. Real nice. We're seeing good punting in his football game so far. And that was into a stiff breeze. He got to kick that one, Jose. First down on the 22-yard line for Marion Catholic. Thank you. 
Lights will complete out in the flat. Tackle made by Lantini, but a gain of probably about eight yards, nine yards. Second down, one yard to go. Leitzel tries it to Balliot. First down, or close to a first down. I don't think he... I don't Looks think like Steve Sinkovich getting up sorry, off the so bottom. It doesn't have a first down. That's another yard yet, nope, though. only a yard. Okay. It's hard to tell on this field where yes, we're sitting at, where, where he's marking the ball. Oh, we're just not high enough warrant how we usually are. Third down, one yard to go. 4.30 left in the first quarter. No score. Nowitzki split far left. Going to try oh. and, oh, stuffed by the Red Tornado <laughs> That's line. That's Malikowski there. Malikowski in there along with Jeff Evans down on the bottom of the pile. Yeah, he actually probably lost a little bit of yardage on that one, and Aaron Catholic will be forced to punt the ball. Deep for the Red Tornadoes will be number five, Sebas, and number 25, Veach. Number seven, the quarterback, Matt Leitzel, will punt for the Colts. Snaps back. Big rush that time, and it, it showed in the punt. Nice roll, though. Gets a good roll, and <laughs> will be down on about the 32-yard line. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. It's unbelievable. Another 38-yard punt for high school. That's uh, really saying something. Three, 336, the Red Tornadoes will take over here in the first quarter. Josh Paracella and Mike Split, Mike Smith split far right. Tries it up the middle to Bailey, gain of about maybe three yards. And that seems like that's where some yardage is going to turn up here, guys. If you take a look, that was a spread formation off offensively. And you take a look at what Marion does. They're continually adjusting. And they're, they're, again, like most teams, intent on sealing the outside off, which is going to leave the middle a little better open for a fullback all the time. Out of the I formation, the Red Tornadoes. On the option, Sebas keeps it and gains no yards. 71 Horvath and 52 Harmonoski in on the tackle. <laughs> Big third down play for the Red Tornado offense. They want to get something moving here, Warren. Sebas, straight drop back. Big rush, incomplete, good play made by number two, Tim Matula. He was in great position that time. He saw the play all the way, he timed his run. He just stuck his hand in there and batted the ball away at the last second from, uh, that was the fullback out there uh, in the pattern that time. Big rush from Radoka again from yeah. this left side though. Yeah. We have to pick him up and give Nick Sebas a little more time. Yeah, they're getting real good <laughs> pressure on Sebas right now, at least in this first quarter. Steve Sinkovic in punt formation, timeout called. We must be sure. By the Red Tornadoes and somebody's not out there. Well, it's hard to hide yourself when you run onto the field, isn't it, Warren? Yeah, there's <laughs> not much you can do about that one. <laughs> But again, those, those are mistakes that have plagued us throughout the year so far. Little mistakes, you know, the, the offside mistake, the, the, the too many guys or too little guys, and those things are beginning to hurt us now in big games. And this is where you got to be real careful and be real disciplined. But you know, it, it's all, always not what it seems. Remember at Supper Club Thursday night, Warren, Coach Edwards explained one of those penalties from last week. Right, right. A, a person was in the game who was in because of someone else was hurt and he was supposed to come out for the punt and didn't know that he was supposed to right. come out for the punt. So exactly. it's always not exactly what it seems. Good snap from Terry Meyer. Steve Zinkovic with the reception. There's a clip on the play, and they pick it up. That was Tackle the missile gut hit. By number uh, 65, 
Jeremiah Brown. Yeah, Moroz, Moroz was the uh, the player that was clipped that time. He was first man down, and had he not been clipped, he would have nailed the ball carrier. So that's going to be a big penalty against the Colts and drive them back. And again, the missile's almost always first man down. That's one thing about him. They, they pull the fuse on him and they send him. He's a heat seeker. <laughs> that one's going back to the Colt 22-yard line. Uh, Barrasso seems to be able to catch the ball, though. He's he, On every punt now, he, he has mm -hmm. picked the ball up in the air, and that gains a lot of uh, a lot of territory when you can do that one. Well, he was the kid we saw last year, remember? That's, yep. that's a name and a, and a guy we watched last year. He had a good game last year. He's, he's a quality football player here for the Colts. First and ten, Leitzel sets the Colts. Little Roll going to throw back across the field. Has his receiver. Close to a first down, Matula with the ball. Yeah, that is a first down. He's first past down. the marker. That was a nice play there. And again, they're coming over the middle. They're, they're curling in over the middle. Almost every play so far here in the first quarter was a pass over the middle. And he's just finding it, trying to find a seam there, and, he, and he's turning. And the key right now is that they're, they're protecting Leitzel. He is not under any kind of pressure well, right now to throw the ball. The pass he threw there, it was just like a little rollout, and, and it, he just had, a, he had time to do that. They went backside that time. All the action went left, and he turned back and threw across the field. Going to try Bally it up the middle. 60, Malakoski with the tackle after about maybe a two- or three-yard gain. It was Marion's initial first down at about 140 of the first period, guys. Thanks, Jose. I have to lean up to see that clock. <laughs> Second down, seven yards to go. Nowitzki in motion. It's an option play to Balliot. They get him outside. Good block over there, and he gets down for a first down. A great block. I uh, didn't see who threw it. Nick Chesney was in a perfect place to make the tackle, and and someone yeah, just he got had a great block. Yeah, they had a ni nice play that time. They surprised Mount Carmel area a little bit that time, and really got once they got Balliot outside, he had some running room and a big gain that time for the Colts. Big 14-yard pickup for Balliot. First down on our 48-yard line. What you have to do there, Jose, is take care of the uh, defensive end right away, and somebody did over on that right side, probably Brian Horvath, the 6'3", 240 senior tackle. Lidesell back to pass, out in the flat again. Good pass to number 21, first down again. Josh to About the 38-yard line. Josh slipped on a play, Was he caught him going back, and he slipped, he couldn't recover to come back up. It's third consecutive first down for Marion. Throwing those little short passes to the flat or to the middle of the field, Jose? Yeah, right now, Bob, they are. He's, they're moving the ball around really well, if you think about it. Out of split backs. Tries Barrasso, 60 Malakoski with the tackle. I tell you, Jason's having a heck of a football game here so far in the first quarter alone. He's all over the place. Second down, 10 yards to go. I don't think that's the area that they're going to be able to exploit. No, I said that earlier. The, the real middle there between the inside those the tackles, that's not where you want to run the ball. If you're going to have some success, you're going to have to try to get outside a little bit. At the end of the first quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes, zero. The Marion Catholic Colts, zero. Talk a little bit about Supper Club Warren on Thursday nights. Yeah, we had another, another good crowd. Of course, we were weakened a little bit because of uh, the high school having uh, an open house. So we lost all the teachers and a lot of parents. Uh, so there were some empty seats for the first time this year, but we expect everybody back next week. And again, you, you just cannot have a better time talking Mount Carmel area football than you can at Supper Club. And it, it takes you from 6.30 till about quarter to 8. You know, it's not a real big evening that lot lengthwise. And uh, for the cost of what it's going to cost you to buy a meal and give five bucks to the club, you can't go wrong. You get to meet some quality kids and some cheerleaders we have with us every week now. And it's really just a good time to talk a little bit of football about the, the, the previous game and, and, and the game coming up. And just really a good time. If you ever want to do it, I mean, if you've got nothing to do on a Thursday night and you think, you know, maybe I'll come down, by all means do it. There's no dues. We don't keep track of that. If you come, you come. If you don't, you're not. It's no big deal to us. Pretty evenly matched first quarter, guys. 12 plays for Mount Carmel, total of 38 yards on offense, all on the ground for Marion Catholic. 14 plays for 57 yards in the first half, 38 in the air, 19 on the ground. 
a pretty decent balance, and it's not exactly what I expected from Marion. I expected them to be tough defensively. I didn't think they'd be able to move the ball. Even though 57 yards doesn't sound like a lot, it is it is a lot against this defense. Yeah, and I think what they did, they came out with those little quick passes like you're going to see right now again, Jose, and, and a good play made by Ron Lantini that time. He came up to get Valiant for only about a two-yard gain, but you can see that's where they're trying to go right now is to get that uh, little flat pass out here and, and then also try the slant over the middle, Warren. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what, if you looked at, the previous games, and you looked at any kind of success, success that any team has had against us, that's where they've had it. So that's what you got to try to exploit. Well, there's no question they have to throw to football. I mean, I don't think anybody ever denied that. Uh, Coach Stan has been around a long time, and I'm sure he knows how, with a quarterback like Andrew last year and lights are here. Trips left right now. And, and we only have we'll two, two guys there. on him. Yeah. Somebody's open over there. There he is, over his head, number 18, Barrasso, but there was only double coverage yeah, on we, a trip. He wishes set. he had that back oh, because yes. he was the guy that, that came free. Well, Nikki has deep coverage on that. Nikki would have been able to slide over for the deep guy, but the other people had short responsibility. That was, he just came underneath the, the other two guys as they split as they raced downfield and was wide open. Fourth down for Marion Catholic, and of, I'm, I'm sure you're going to see that trip set again, Jose. Especially to the wide side of the field, there's a lot of things can happen over there, and if we didn't, we covered it a little loosely, and they're, perhaps they're going to come back to it. Not fourth and seven, I'd say. It's a, yeah, it's fourth a, down, it's a long seven. There six, it is again. Seven. Watch the back, tight end on the backside too. You never know what they're going to. Maybe that was setting something else Lights up. Lights look into the same play, but a big rush from Cuff. Now Dalkus finishes him off, but thank you, that was that was Cuff and, Jeff, and Evans. Jeff Evans. Right, Jeff Evans was down under the bottom. We saw Cuffy coming over the top. First down, Red Tornadoes from the 36-yard line. You know, the dog does his best work at the ankles, guys. You never see him on top of anything. He's always the guy in the dirt all the time. <laughs> That's what I like about him. Van Doren split far right. Paracella split left. Beats the ball carrier, but a good tackle made by number 74, Kent Smith. Number one, Terry Meyer comes in with the play. Meyer comes in like at a tight end there, Jose. No, he's a wing left. Okay, thank you. Going to go to that side. Gets the block from Meyer, and Sebas finds running room. First down at about the 48-yard line. Good block that time on the left side of the Red Tornado offensive line. Terry flexed just a little bit more than the normal wing position, and, I, and he just kicked out on that because I guess the person covering over the wing was playing outside eye, and uh, Nick cut it up inside of Terry's block, and it was a nice gain on that play. We're going to have to at halftime talk to one of our crew, our German exchange student down there, Matthias. Yes. He was right at the point of the tackle, and we got to tell him that freezing solid is not what you want to do. Sebas going to the right side. Gain of about five yards and gets down to the 45-yard line. That was a play all the way where he was going to run with the ball. Yeah, both plays were. Last play in this time, and I guess uh, Whitey's going to attempt to use Nick's speed outside with some blocking in front. Hey, it will work. <laughs> Meyer comes into the game, also number 60, Jason Malakoski. We'll go double tight with Jason in the game. Bailey comes out, and we go with that cheater back situation where they come up right behind the line, Jose. Going to go to Veach, right behind it. Oh, one step, and he had it. One step, and he was gone. Close to a first down, and it is. No. He, oh, my goodness. Look where this placement is. <laughs> We're talking. They're going to have to measure this, aren't they? No, no he called it. First down. I was but say, it, how could he get that close, close there? Right, right. My goodness. Ball's on the 42-yard line in Marion territory. 9.45 left on the clock. Uh, Mount Camilleri is in the midst of their first sustained drive of the football game. Coming with the cheater backs again to the left side, short side of the field. Sebus is going to keep it right behind them. Picks up maybe four or five yards. And right now it's gaining that four or five yards when you're uh, number 12, your strong safety, Neil Nowitzki, is making the tackle. You're going to pick up some yards, guys. Well, obviously, obviously Big Red has, has found a seam now. They, they like what they see. They've run several plays in that same direction. 
So, I mean, and again, like any good football team, you find it working, you're going to do it until uh, Marion is able to adjust to it somehow. Well, one of these times they're going to go hard that way, and you're going to see a bootleg to the right with Sebus. It's going to be a pass to Cuff. Incomplete. That's a new wrinkle. And we've not seen, not seen that one so far this year, I don't think. The time we had the tight end down deep. I mean, he was running a deep pattern for us. Again, good coverage, though. They were on him yeah, right there. Yeah, they did, they did pick him up when he came off the line. <clears throat> Third down, seven yards to go. Good pressure from both ends, and, and in particular, number 17, Tony uh, Radoka for the Marion Catholic Colts. Sebus, back to pass. Tries the draw play, gain of only about one yard. Gets down to about the uh, 35. 35. John had trouble with the handoff on that time, just about had it. Just delayed him just enough to not be able to cut it, cut it up. Fourth down, the Red Tornadoes are going to go for it here, Jose. Oh, look, I, I think it's a good call myself. I, I'd probably go for it here too. Well, Marion hasn't shown like, they, like they're going to run the, the field either. Plus, you're probably going to punt it into the end zone. Seba slipped on that play. Over the head of Paracella. First down, Marion Catholic Colts. And we've known over the years, as long as you can leave these Colts in a game, it gets closer and closer as the game goes, Warren. That it does. You know, this, this team, man, you match them up talent-wise, we should be head and shoulders above them. But they are a good football team. Now, they're, they're the kind of team that's traditionally always given us a little bit of trouble. They're not real big. But they're quick, and they're a scrappy bunch, and right now they're giving us everything we can handle. Leitzel sets his Colts. He's changing it now. Puts Tim Matula out far left. Oh, fumble, oh, fumble on the play, and recovered by Leitzel, the quarterback. That time we never had a handoff. He never got the ball inside. It bounced off his thigh pad and hit the ground. And, and he, the, the, the back isn't able to adjust to that. It's such a, a quick play and so short of a distance. Either the quarterback gets it in where he needs it or he doesn't. And that time he just bounced on, on a pad and hit the ground. He was, he was lucky to recover it. Cut for Malakoski, real close to recovering that for the Red Tornadoes. Second down, 13 yards to go. 7.44 left in the first half. No score from Marion Stadium here. Lights will rolls, looks downfield, has a receiver, the tight end incomplete and Flag. flags on the play. They're going to they're gonna call contact that on that. That was Fritzinger going downfield. He was covered, but flags on the play, and this will be a first down for the Colts on the interference call. And that time Marion figured if we could do it, they could do it. They sent their tight end deep downfield on a pattern, and he was really the only guy you could have thrown to down there. He was well covered, but... They just bumped hips there right before he caught the ball and he picked up the uh, pass interference call. Out of the, out of the wing, set, wing T set that they were in last time, there's not many people you can throw to. Right. I mean, it kind of limits yourself yeah. the way you're doing it anyway, so he was going to head to the tight you end. Got one, on that or, play. one or two man pattern and mm -hmm. should have been easy to cover. That's fourth first down for Mary in this half. Number 12, Neil Nowitzki brings in the play for the Colts. Good blocking by the offensive line of before the Colts right now, too, Jose. He's getting time to throw. <laughs> Motion going to do an end around. Leitzel gains only about one yard. Maybe he gets a little more. Cuff was in there. Also, number two, Nick Chesney. We're, no, they're going to mark the they're going to mark the ball back up where he hit the ground. There's also a flag. It's going to be holding against Marion. No, they marked the ball way back here, Warren. They, they marked it down here like a six-yard gain. Yeah, he, didn't, he didn't land there, though. It, it doesn't really matter. The holding call is going to bring them back. But uh, I thought that was a poor placement that time. I really did. I don't see how he could have got there. That was the end around the Barrasso. Marion Catholic is, again, a, they're, they are a, a group that gives you everything offensively, too. I mean, they run an option. They run the end around. They'll come out of a wing tee. They'll do all kinds of things there. Leitzel rolls. Fakes to Joe on. Big play by 71, Dan Dalkus. There was the big end with his, got his wings yep. up there. He's, they're tough to throw over here in cuff when they get their arms up. You can't sack the quarterback, you put the hands up, and 
Now Weitzel's six foot two, so he's not a small quarterback, and he's gonna he's gonna bring uh, some height to the to the position. But that time had no chance to get the ball over Daukas. Weitzel rolls on the option. Hits Balliad. Balliad takes it outside, but not with Terry Meyer <laughs> on his back. Good tackle by number one, Terry Meyer. Third down and still about 20 yards to go for the Marion Catholic Colts. And yeah, now they had fooled us with that the first time, but that time Meyer read it perfectly, and there was nowhere they were going. Six thirty-nine left in the first half. No score. And this is kind of a mirror of the game we played two years ago up here. It's, it's, it's a lot like it, and it's going to scare you a little bit here, right? It now. always does when we come up here. Yeah. Leitzel back to pass. Cuff with the rush, but he finds room downfield. Has a receiver. Oh, incomplete. Number two, Tim Matula. Had he caught it, it was a touchdown. No, that was Nick the, Chesney uh, fell down yeah. that time. And it, I guess part of the grass might have got loose to him, or maybe Nick would have got that ball. Matula, Matula really kind of gave up on the on the thing when he shouldn't have. Had he not stopped and slowed up, that was a touchdown. It really was. He was out in, in, in behind everybody, but he just kind of turned and he slowed, and the ball sailed right past him. Nice pass that time by Leitzel, I thought. Fourth down, number seven, Leitzel, the punter, at 6.20 left in the first half. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, Veach and Sebus. Snaps back. Sort of a line drive kick this time, taken by Veach and Sebus, taken by Veach. Tried cutting it up the middle of the field. Now he's coming to the outside, and he'll only go for about maybe a three-yard gain. Gets it up to about the 24-yard line. Big Red takes over, and I'm sure that the coaching staff is going to be getting a little bit nervous here right now. They want to see, see us put something together here, stay penalty-free if we can on a drive, which has been not the easiest thing for us to do so far this year, and uh, get some points on the board here before halftime. Out of the eye formation. Pitch back to Veach, going to take it outside. Still on his feet. Looks like he gained about maybe eight yards. Nope. It's hard to tell from here, Warren. Now that, well, yeah, so gained him right, about five yards. See, you're, you're right, when you're looking at where that yard marker is. Ball's right, ball's resting on the 30-yard line. Sukovic now in the backfield at, at the slot wing there. Well, you know it's coming that way. Good block by Steve Sinkovich. He's going to, oh, Sebas tried to go outside of him. <laughs> and and Steve Sinkovich thought he was going to cut right. it back inside. So that's a gain of... Looks like a first, first down. down. Yeah, he yeah, did pick the gain first of about down. Four yards. Same play from before where Terry Meyer had the good block and, and he cut it up inside, and this time he stayed outside. 5.17 on the clock. <laughs> Split backs for the Red Tornadoes. Meyer now on the slot on the right side. Tries Veach back left on a counter play. Good hit made by the number two on the tackle, which is Matula, and Matula is the cornerback, and he just was in the middle of the field. So right now they're 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 uh, they're just staying real up close to the to the ball, Jose. Yeah, they are. They're not they're not being worried about our passing at all right now. But uh, Nick's going to hit something shortly here and open it up a little bit. Second down, nine yards to go. Sebas keeps the ball, and great read that time by Horvath. number 71, Brian Horvath. Yeah, now we, we stayed away from Horvath on the last drive. Oh. Ran everything to the opposite side of him. And we were stacked to that side that he's, time. He's I mean, a they quality were just football player. He really over is. There. We had Malakoski over there. You have Chris Cuff over there and the two and the two uh, cheater backs. And uh, Corvath split a gap there and, and made the stop. And we, we've not had a lot of success to his side. We, we've had success coming left. Trips right. Sebas pitches to Bailey. Bailey's looking over here at Paracel. It's a floater. Intercepted by number 21, a great interception. 
by Wertman, and he brings it back to about the line of scrimmage for the Red Tornadoes, which is about the 38-yard line. First down, Marion Catholic. Uh, I mean, Big Red, basically, if you're going to be in the stands or in the booth or watching them, the, the, what you really could say is they need to kick it up a notch here a little bit. Well, we've seen this at Marion. It's a hard place on a Saturday afternoon for Red Tornado teams to kick it up, isn't it, Jose? When we've yes, seen it. Yes, it is, Bob. Lights all back to pass. In the flat, almost intercepted by Lentini, but he went after the ball, and it'll be a first down for the Colts. In on the stop over there, number five, Sebus. Reception made by number 12, Nowitzki. Gain of about nine yards, second down and one. Lytle with one yard to go. Tries an inside hand oh, big play again, by 60 Malakoski. <laughs> Jason number is two all over. the ball carry Matula, and Matula gets up slow after that hit. Uh, he took a nice shot on the leg that time, and he's limping. He's going to limp off, in fact. Took a helmet, really, because Malakoski shot through there like a bullet, and he was there right as, he, as uh, Matula got the ball. Two twenty-nine on the clock and winding down. Big third down play for the Red Tornado defense here. Split backs for the Colts. Blitz coming from the Red Tornadoes. Radoka goes in motion. Lytle with a big rush from Cuff. Intercepted by 47, Steve Sinkovich. He's got lots of running room. Lytle, he makes a good move on Lytle. Cuffy makes a good block. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. And the Red Death defense puts the touchdown on the board. Yeah, nice pickoff by Sinkovich. Great downfield blocking. Cuff, in particular, it was staying on, at his side. He turned and made a fabulous block and, and sprung Sinkovich the rest of the hey, way for the touchdown. Put the ball in Steve Sinkovich's hands, and he's going to gain yards for you, whether it's on the defense or the offensive side. Seven or 800 yards last year. That's about a 71-yarder, the best we can tell from where we got the ball. 58 Mikes and Kovic in to attempt the extra point. Paracella with the hold and John Else with the long snap. Snaps back to Paracella. It's down. The kick's up. And it's good with... 2.04 left on the clock in the first half. The score, the Red Tornado 7, the Marion Catholic Colts nothing. And I think we heard a, 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 an audible sigh of relief off Big Red's sideline there. Try to get some, some momentum and something going here, and Steve Sinkowitz provided the spark. And again, I, I can't tell you how well everybody started blocking, though. And, and when you're a defensive right. player, to, to be able to change like that, everybody was watching, that they didn't get anybody in the back, and Cuff kind of lined up there and gave him an escort until he had to turn and, and block the last guy. So really an excellent football play by Big Red. Number 58, Mike Sinkovich will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. Barrasso is the deep back for Marion Catholic. Sixteen straight extra points for Mike Sinkovich this year. Ah, we got a question answered there, Jose, because everybody was questioning about the one that was on the penalty last week. Well, you have to attempt it. Okay. A reverse. Nowitzki has the ball to the outside, finds some running room, and he's up around the 38-yard <laughs> line. I saw Moreau's, though. I saw the, hon the honing going on there. He honed in on him, and boom. Good play by... Stan Nikowski again, though he's pulling all the stops out for the Red Tornado game, isn't he, guys? Under two minutes to play now in the first half, and Marion now finds itself in a 7 nothing hole. And, and they, they've got to be disappointed because they were playing exceptionally well on both sides of the ball. They really were. They were moving the ball a little bit offensively. They got hurt by a couple of ugly penalties, but they had to be happy with the way they were moving it here. And now, boom, in a blink of an eye, they're seven points down. Ball is on the 35-yard line. Option play. 
Gets it outside. Good tackle made by Malakoski and 47, Steve Sinkovich. Yeah, actually, I, I think we got fooled on the option play the first time, but I don't know if I'd run the option play anymore because <laughs> it's, it's definitely not the play that's going to bring up a lot, of, a lot of yardage right now. Clock still winding down, 1.30 left in the first half. The other thing you don't like about your option play, it's only picking you up two yards. You're also getting your quarterback nailed every time you run it. Right now, Leitzel shows no real urgency. Back to pass. Looks over the middle, in and out of the hands of number one, Terry Meyer. Tried to hit number 21, Ryan Wortman. <laughs> Third down, eight yards to go, and that stops the clock at 117. Meyer's trying to find that hole at that ball went there right now. Terry's saying, where did that thing go? It was low, and he was trying to pick it up there, but again, he was in perfect position that time, and that would have taken the pass away one way or the other. Big third down play for Marion Catholic, and actually, I don't know if they want to give the ball back to the Red Tornadoes right here with this amount of time left, so they'd mm -hmm. like to just get a first down. He has his trips out there. Looks Ooh. Oh, big hit. The ball's loose. And recovered by the Red Tornadoes. Malakoski's on it, but Chris Leitzel's Cuff hurt with too. a big hit. Oh, Leitzel's big hit. Leitzel's down. That's as bad as a hit as you're ever going to get what as a quarterback. What a hit from Chris Cuff. Wow. Yeah, he shook Leitzel on that one. The ball just completely popped out of there. Uh, Malakoski, he is all over the football field right now defensively for Big Red, having perhaps his best game of the season. He's had some dandies up till now, but really asserting himself defensively. But... You got a feel for Leitzel that time. He took a major league hit, and he's right now on the sidelines trying to shake that baby off. Luckily, we're close to halftime for him. Timeout called here by Marion Catholic because they want to get in there, and uh, Leitzel uh, plays some defense, but uh, they're talking to him right now on the sideline. Well, they're, they're basically asking all the important questions, what day it is, who do you play for, who are your parents. <laughs> You know, they're trying to get answers to the important questions. And he really took just a momentous hit that time. Coach Williams coming off the field now, talking to his Red Tornado offense. Like to put another one on the board here at the end of this first half. Van Doren split far right. Josh Paracella, 29, split far left. Bailey goes in motion. It's going to be a screen pass. Hits Veach, there they come. Up the middle, good block by Els the center, and he gets down to about the 10 yards. Still yet. on his feet <laughs> to about the five yard line. 33, could have made the stop there, Jose Joe Ott, and Jonathan Els came out and put him down. And now there's a sense of urgency from Big Red because now they're gonna try to score again. They took the ball over, I can't see the what time. We have 56, 56 seconds. seconds left there. Sorry, Jose, I'm gonna have to. That's okay. We lean that in this end, it's, it's trying tough to for me. Yard line myself. The ball's on the, the six. six yard line. First down and goal to go. Split backs for the Red Tornadoes. Gonna go with Sebus out around the end, cuts it back, touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Now they're rolling. Yeah, well, I mean, there you have Marion Catholic playing a, an excellent first half until uh, till two minutes and, and one second left or four seconds left. Two turnovers and two touchdowns and now Marion finds itself about to be in a 14-0 a hole and they're over there wondering where the game went is what really happened to them. 58, Mike Zinkovich in to attempt the extra point. You're right, Warren. It was a great game up until that point, and it's amazing how a two minutes can change the total complexion. Snaps back, it's down, the kick's up, and it's good. With 39 seconds left on the clock, the score, the Red Tornadoes 14, Marion Catholic nothing, even though the scoreboard says six. <laughs> I mean, it's really just amazing how quickly the game turned for Marion Catholic. That's, I, <laughs> I'm sure they're going to try to figure out what happened. But turnovers are killers. We know that in any game. And to have them happen so quickly uh, by the half there is really going to be disappointing to Marion Colts right now. Uh, and when you're the quarterback and you get your bell rung like that, the next time you go back to throw, it's not quite as easy, Warren. And he, I just give him a lot of credit if he comes back in the game. Sinkovich with the squibber kick. Fumbled around and picked up by... Nowitzki, I Nowitzki. guess. And down on his ankles, 29, Josh Paracella, and 26, Ron Lentini. And uh, I'm, Leitzel's going to come in. He's trotting back onto the field, so that's what I mean. you got to give him a ton of credit just for coming back in a football game because a lot of times... That, that ends the game for you, that kind of hit. 
And I think Marion probably is going to, I would assume, be a little conservative here. Yeah, because 31 been, seconds you know, left on the clock. In the last two minutes, they don't want to have any more damage done to them before the half. They put it back in motion. Going to try the fullback, or no, it's Bally at the tailback, and he gains about five or six yards. Tackle made by 26 Lentini. 20 seconds and winding down. And it looks like they're content to just leave this go. Yeah, and I would be too right now. I'd want to get in that in the locker room and kind of regroup, give my quarterback a little bit of time to sit down and shake the head off and get ready for a big third quarter if I'm the Colts. Tries Joe on up the middle. Terry Meyer with the tackle, helped out by Steve Zinkovich, and that's the end of the first half. The score, the Red Tornadoes 14, the Marion Catholic Colts nothing. We'll be back with some halftime stats in one moment. We're back and we have the halftime stats from Jose Gonzalo. All right, first half, Bob, pretty even statistically. Uh, the score isn't indicative of how close the game really was. Defensively, and the coaches upstairs just agreed that they've just kept this in the game. For Mount Carmel, 19, 19 rushing attempts for, 18, for 80 yards, one of seven passing for 17, and a total of five first downs. Individually, Johnny Veach, nine carries for 45 yards. Nick Sebus, eight carries for 30. Al Bailey, two for five, and Johnny Veach, one catch for 17. For Marion, 17 attempts on the ground for a total net of 20 yards. So defensively, we are doing what we always do, and, and they're, they're right in a football game. Passing, six of 13 for 50, uh, total of 70 yards in the first half for Marion with four first, four first downs. Two big interceptions are, are really what, what has hurt uh, Leitzel in his first half performance. Definitely. They were a little more, and, and you know, we, we talk about this and we harp on it, but you have to say it. Every time a Mount Carmel team comes up here, they don't play one of their better performances. It, it, over the years, it's just never happened here. We well, played well against Marion at home, yeah, but at for home. some reason up here, we don't. Well, you, you can even two years ago when the state championship team was up here, if people remember, it was 14-6 to 6 going into the half, and Marion fumbled the ball on the goal line. Yeah, they could have right. gone into the half being 14-14, right. and it could have been right. a real good football game. Johnny Veach uh, turned things up in the second half, and we ended up winning pretty big, but it was not indicative of the type of game it was. Two years before that in the 94 state championship team, it, it was pretty much a runaway then, but I think they were a little down. But back home, if you remember last year, it came down to a goal line stand at the end of the yep. game. And in, in 93 at home, it was a 19-7 football game that, that we won going away in the second half. So Marion and, and Coach Stan has always played Mount Carmel tough and I think has a lot to do with his friendship with Chink and Whitey and everybody else. Right. And I think they really want to win these type of football games. And we always talk about this one too in the, in the fact that this is a much bigger game for Marion every year than it is for Mount Carmel. It's, it's just they have the ability to get up, as will North Schuylkill next week, You're right. to get up for that game more than the Red Tornado. Well, you will. talk about key games. In Mount Carmel, obviously, Shemokin and Southern and North Schuylkill are the games that I think that they emotionally look forward to more. And uh, although Marion does mean a lot, it's just not quite the same as those three <coughs> rivalries. Right. I think the thing to remember is we're sandwiched in between like five great games, too. Workman with the punt, taken by Bailey, right in the middle of the field, finds some running room, and carries the ball up to about the 39-yard line. I didn't see where he got it, Jose. On the 15. Thank you. Take a moment, guys. Yard. Hey, you, guys uh, you guys might have seen, we're on Wednesday, of course, on the weekend, last weekend, golf team number three in District 4. We Now, as we're talking, we don't know the end of this. We had a guy that was second. Mike Zosh. Mike Zosh was second in the district so far, and he had one more round, I guess, to play today, or Saturday, but you'll already know this, but uh, congratulations to the golf team. A, a great season for those kids. They had a great year. Fake to Bailey, going to give it to Veach around the left side. Good blocking that time. First down and more, and inside the locker room, the Red Tornado saw something 
to change the blocking scheme on that left side of the Red Tornado offensive line. Or it could have been an old-fashioned butt-kicking jink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ruling that one out either. <laughs> a little bit of, uh, shall we say, coaching inspiration. <laughs> well, the coaches in coming back upstairs said that we're going to score in the first drive, so we'll really put them out of the limb right now. A lot of motion going on there, and I think a Colt jumped offside, but we'll see here in one second. They keep switching their defensive formation. Now, we got a legal procedure called against the Red Tornadoes. They keep switching their defensive formation, Warren. They go yeah, I the said that, and I said that. That's what they do. More than any team we see play, Bob, is that constant movement right before the snap of the ball all the time. Oops, sorry, Jose. Okay. First down and 15 for the Red Tornadoes. Split backs. Paracel a split far right. Tries Bailey off the left side again. Gain of about six yards. Third, it'll be third, no, it'll be second down and nine yards to go. It was odd on the, on the tackle that time. And he's having a nice football game for himself. More defensively than he is offensively yes. right now. But a nice football game by Odd. And of course, Horvath and that Nowitzki, uh, number 12. He's playing a good game, too. Neil Nowitzki, he's had himself a nice football game so far. Well, I don't think it matters what fullback you are. You're going to have a rough game in offense. Yeah. And Ott, <laughs> Ott's the fullback. So. Yeah. Veach, again off the left side. Lots of running room. Cuts it back. One man to beat. He He's beat to him. the 10, and he beat him. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Good blocking by the left side of the Red Tornado offensive line that time. Well, the coaching staff was right, guys. We, we went they, three plays to the left side and, and did an excellent job behind Dalkas, Els, and Volkler. 44-yard touchdown run for Johnny Beach on that play. And we, well, we've looked, at least we look crisp now. I mean, now we're out there popping people instead of kind of in slow motion there. This is a good thing to see from Big Red. And, of course, they're sluggish, and it could be a lot of reasons. Uh, the big reason might be coming off one of the best football games we've seen in a long time last week. Snaps back from Els to Paracella to Sinkovich, and the kick is good, and that is for a record, Jose. That ties the all-time record at Mount Carmel area for 18 consecutive extra points, which was originally set back in 1971 and 72 by Glenn Bonesy Adams, who came up here especially to kick during the 71 and 72 seasons. So that gives him 18 consecutive extra points without a miss. Good job, Mike Sinkovich. And his next one, will be, he'll be the all-time record holder with his next kick. All by himself. Jose has that uh, eyeglass problem that we talk about. <laughs> we had that you know, discussion earlier, earlier yeah. about close-up, you know. Yeah. We all, you we get all, a little older. It all turn into our mid-40s and take our glasses off to read now. <laughs> it's amazing how good I can see without them. But then when I have to watch out there, I don't see anything. We know the feeling. Mike Zinkovich to kick off for the Red Tornadoes. A little bouncer. Picked up by Balliet. Nope, it's number 12, the ball carrier, Nick Nowitzki. And 41, Mickey Moreau's there, also number six, helping out for the Red Tornadoes, Vince Yasenchak. Jose, uh, Richie Barsh just looked up in the box and nearly had a heart attack when he saw you up here sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what to make of this now down there. He's confused. I hope I didn't mess up my contract and realize that I'm supposed to be on the sidelines. But it's all your fault, Robert. Well, if you don't get paid this week, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> my Gus. <guess>. Paid? <laughs> Number two. <laughs> oh, Ballia tries it up the middle and gets a little farther this time, probably about a three-yard gain. Down on the bottom of the pile, number one, Terry Meyer. Nine fifty left in the third quarter. Red Tornadoes in the lead, twenty-one nothing. Leitzel on the roll, Terry Meyer with the read, and he takes him down for about a five-yard loss. <laughs> he saw that play instantly. Leitzel had absolutely no chance to do anything with that one. That, that's not a play I'd run again. I would not try to run that play again. You leave a quarterback naked out there like that, and he's already been hit once uh, this, this, this game. This should last him the rest of the year, so I would not expose my quarterback quite like that again.
Leitzel with Ott. Right behind him, fakes it to Ott. Looks on a roll, little screen almost intercepted by Malakoski. Malakoski inches away from intercepting that screen pass. Well, he threw that into a crowd, didn't he? There was, everybody was over there. He had four or five of his own guys and four or five of us standing there waiting to see where the ball was going. Wasn't well designed. No. That time. <laughs> no, they, they may have to rework that particular play. The part receiving team did not come on the field, Jose. Or else he's just staying in single coverage this time. I yep. don't think he expects a fake. Maybe they're going to go at it. We'll see. Yeah, he's just putting Sebus back there. That's the only yep, thing going to go this back. Is it. Well, he went with Sebus, and then nobody else came onto the field. So, <laughs> Snaps back. Looks like a rush coming from Cuff. Bounces on about the 38-yard line and rolls by Sebus down to about the 26-yard line. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. Forty-four yard punt by Leitzel that time. He must be averaging around over 40 yards yeah. a punt. We thought we saw it all last week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you see two great punters in, in a row in high school. That's unusual. Very. And now putting the rush on him too. We have we have some definite pressure on him to punt that ball. That time I thought we had him. In fact, that last one I thought Cuffey was going to get him. Bailey the lone back goes to Bailey. Off the right side, and he moves his feet and keeps going to the 30-yard line. 71 with the initial hit, uh, Brian Horvath. <laughs> he's coming all the way over from his right tackle yeah. spot for that. Yeah, yeah. He, he is. he's everything we heard about. We, he was talked about at Supper Club a little bit, and uh, he, he's proven to be everything you'd want a little bit. Now, he's lining up, actually, he's lining up on, on this side. Oh, okay. They, he's, he's, he's over in front of us here now. Beach up the middle, finds some running room and gets now first that, down at about the 39-yard line. That time he was given a how, how are you and a hello, <laughs> and he was nailed. So that time they got him out of the play pretty well. I guess the other guy, Stan Dick, Dikowski, has talked a lot about, Jose, was, uh, and you said last night, uh, Fran Harmonoski. Fran Harmonoski, uh, Coach Edwards said that uh, Coach Stan has mentioned that he thinks he's the best nose guard that he's ever coached. So uh, Mr. Else must be doing a decent job yeah. on him today. Yeah, because I had a heard you guys mention his name. Extremely a quiet game up to date anyway. Shift into that 4-4 defense. And Bailey, the ball carrier, 33 ought and 52 Harmonoski on the tackle. But again, a different play there when you shift into that four, Jose. Yeah, it comes off. He's not on the center at that time. John had a different responsibility on the play. 7.36 left in the third quarter, 21-0. Marion makes it tough on the offensive line with so much movement right before the ball gets snapped all the time. You really have to know what you're supposed to be doing and who your guy is right up to the last second because they move around so much. Out of the eye, second and eight. Sebas back to pass, gets the rush put on him. He's going to run with the ball and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Run down by number 71, Brian Horvath. Just big rushes from the from the deep from the end position though. The defensive ends are coming in. We just gotta hold them up a little bit and give give Sebas time and he has to step up into the pocket on that one, Jose. Yeah, he's a little anxious to get out all the time. He's gotta settle his feet. 645 left in the third. I formation, third down, eight yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. Fakes to Bailey, and it was a quarterback draw, maybe. It looked like a possible option, but he An just option. chose to keep it inside. Fourth down and long Because Johnny was trailing on the outside. So punt situation for the Red Tornadoes. Terry Meyer, number one, will be the long snap along the punter, number 47, Steve Sinkovich. Snaps back. End over end line drive kick taken by Matula back on about the 21 yard line. Find some running room to the outside, a great block. And gets up to about the 48 yard line. Nice block over there by somebody. I didn't see who it was, but my goodness. 
sprung him free and he got an extra 15 yards out of it. The recipient was number 50, Matt Booker. Yeah, he got a he got a welcome to the game on that one, and he's coming off the field, but he, he got back up right away. Coach Connolly said, how was that? Was that hard? <laughs> Leitzel, back to pass. Look at on that little oh, oh. Might be a lateral, and no, it's an incomplete pass. Oh, he was close on that one. He was real close on that one. That was close to being a lateral. And he threw that completely behind the back. I mean, it wasn't even close there. It was just completely behind him as he was going out. But I, you're splitting hairs whether that baby was, was live or not. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Colts. Leitzel, two receivers split to the short side of the field. He looks at them breaking across the middle. Hits Matula, complete for a first down and more to about the 34-yard line. Chesney in on the tackle along with 26, Lentini. When you give him time, he's a pretty good passer. He really is. He's accurate. He gets himself set up well. And he, and he throws the ball really nice. He does. He's, he's right on target, but he's got to have time. He does, he's not good when he's moving much. The same play they ran in the first half where they had motion left and threw back to the other side of the field. Same play set. Back to pass. Good blocking. Tried it over the middle. Covered that time. Lytle's going to run with the ball, and he'll get knocked out of bounds. Looks like a first down, Jose. 26 Lentini in on the stop. No, it's actually it's it's what do you got? Not going to be a first down. He's going to have about two yards, well, long yard, yard and a half to go. Second down, one yard to go, one or two. Matula moves to the left. Oh, Valiant ran away from the play and gets a first down. He, he was actually going away away from the quarterback, and, and Lytle had to run over to him to it, put it in his stomach. It looked like a sprint draw, and the way you're supposed to run is on an angle, and, and Ballier just seemed to be too far outside for, for uh, Leitzel. First down, and the Colts have themselves a little drive going here. The ball on the 20-yard line, Jose. Sixth first down for Marion, second this half. Lytle, flags on the play. That should go against Marion, I believe. Looking for the signal now. Yep, illegal procedure called against the Colts. Of course, Jose brought pretzels up at halftime, so as far as I'm concerned, he's in the booth permanently. The only problem is he forgot <laughs> the drinks. <laughs> I, I took my salt off, remember. I can make it through the end of the game. <laughs> First down and 15 from the 25-yard line. Barrasso in the slot, and they usually put him in motion, and there he comes. With the split backs to help blocking. Big rush from Sinkovich, and that helped right there. And the blitz, probably yeah. one of the first blitzes we've seen today. Yeah, we have not done much of that, and that, that was a full-blown Linebacker blitz and coach was coming from, from the first moment of the play, and he was right there. That helps break up a pass play a lot. <laughs> 431 left in the third quarter. Leitzel, second down, 15. Back to pass. Rush from Cuff, Ansinkovich, and 60, Malakoski. Lots of red tornadoes coming in on that play. And that time, that time, Lights did a smart thing. He just ducked underneath and went down. Didn't take the vicious hit that time because there was three of them all over him that, on, on that play. Another thing they tried to do there, Warren, was the line tried to pick up Sinkovich, and it left Malakoski right, left somebody and, free and there, Cuff yeah. come. Third down, ball's on the 32-yard line. Leitzel. Oh, it's going to be a pass play, but a big rush from Malakoski, and the pass is caught. 
Unbelievable, the pass caught by it's number a, 12. It's not a first down, though. Which is Neil Nowitzki. Yeah, it's not going to be a first down. But even after the big rush from yeah. Malakoski. Yeah, he threw a nice nice yep. pass that time, and it was kind of a wing and a prayer pass, and the, the receiver adjusted well to it and came back. You don't expect him to really complete a pass like that. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a well-thrown ball, but he did it. Fourth down and about three yards to go. 324 left. The ball's on the 13-yard line left in the third quarter. Oh, Leitzel in the center. Ha oh, Ooh. incomplete. First down and 10 red tornadoes. Good that play was by <laughs> Nick Chesney. Great yeah. play by I mean, Chesney that time. It was in the hands of Ryan Wortman before Chesney hit him. Yeah, he just got his hand around there and popped it, and it went down. And great play by Chesney that time. And again, every time you throw in Chesney's direction, you're, you're considerably lessening your odds that you're going to complete the pass. He has just been fantastic this year. He really has been. It's easily to see why he's an All-Stater. First down and 10 red tornadoes. We're going to come with Veach to the outside. Good read that time by number 12, uh, Nowitzki. He just came from his uh, strong safety spot and made that tackle. Nowitz Nowitzki's had a whale of a football game for defensively for Marion Catholic. He really has. He's been all over the field, and he's real quick. And he's a kid that can close on the ball in, in a blink of an eye. Everybody was blocked on that play except the strong safety. Yeah, Second down and about six yards to go, Warren. He's, he's kept Marion in the game a little closer than it should have been, really, with some nice tackles. We're going to try Veach. Oh, great move by Jonathan Veach, and it'll be close to a first down. I can't tell now. There's We're looking right now where there's five of it there. And They're going to time out for a measurement. Nice little hole off tackle on that play, yeah. and then he got and made one great move on Novitsky to get well, close to the first Well, Sinkovich was, was coming through the hole in the front, and he did a nice job, and uh, he decided to decide which way you want to cut off of Sinkovich when he comes through like that. Looks like it's going to be a little short. Boy, that's as little short as you can get without touching. Third down and inches to go for the Red Tornadoes. Terry Myers in, you'll see a power eye set. Yep. And Jay Malikuski, double tight power eye. It means we can go either way. Well, actually, this is the one he runs with the cheater backs, right? Or when Malikuski's in, Jose? We'll see how they set up in it. it looks like Al Bailey's going to be at the tailback this time. They're going to cheat her back to the left side. That's not a true power eye, but they just get over there a little farther. Quarterback sneak. First down, Red Tornadoes. <laughs> what we're laughing at is Tommy Ch Tom Ryan over here. Uh, he, he likes to follow the bus. Yeah, oh, he said. Yeah. You follow the bus and it's a first down. Well, you got that amount of yardage. I mean, you, if, you're, if you're two yards or less and you really need them bad, Else is the kid you want to get back. I mean, he's going to give you those two yards no matter what. It's just the way he's, his whole career has gone. And again, he's an all-stater because of that too. Out of the I formation, Beach goes in motion, tries Bailey, gains about five yards. And now the Red Tornadoes are content to just power it up here a little bit, Warren. Well, I think I think we we heard some was guys. Sebus with the ball. <coughs> I think Sebas had the ball. I don't think it ever got handed off to no. Bailey. We talked about it in the press box a little bit at halftime, and one of the things you want to look for here is Big Red with 21 points on the board. Now you can afford to try to wear Marion Catholic down a little bit. The longer that defense sits out there on the field, the less and less effective it's going to become, and they've been on the field a lot so far this game, so you're going to start to see them slow up a little bit, I think. One minute left in the third quarter. We're going to take Bailey to the left side. First down. At about the 36-yard line. Tenth first down for Mount Carmel. Fifth this half. Five first half, five this half. Five this quarter. Yeah, the third quarter has been a little more offensively productive for the Red Tornadoes. Officials timeout.
Out of the eye formation, Van Dorn to the right, Paracella split left. Quarterback sneak. Check gain out. Of about, yeah, look that way maybe, gain of about five yards. Nice play that time again. again. They see that opening up like that, and that's something we hadn't seen in the first half. They never adjusted that way in the first half to actually call that play when they see it open. So we are seeing a little bit more offense all the way around the board here for Big Red as the third quarter comes to a close. Either a checkout or a, the end of the third quarter play. That could have been it right there, Jose. <laughs> yeah, good, it's good, good quarter for the Red Tornadoes, though, both offensively and defensively. Well, it gives, it gives me a chance because I forgot to do my homework in the first half. I'm going to get a reprimand out of this. But ladies and gentlemen, you are watching WKMC-TV broadcasting directly from the campus at Mount Carmel Area High School over a microwave signal, WLX 267. We are an instructional fixed television service. You catch us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Channel 13 on the service electric cable system. And remember, uh, those of you who are the early birds in the morning, WKMC-TV is live every morning starting at 7.30 for the announcements at Mount Carmel Area High School news throughout the week. So tune in to Channel 13 at 7.30 in the morning and get, a, get caught up on everything that's going on at Mount Carmel Area for the day and the week coming. Interesting news broadcast in the morning, too, to watch it. And uh, uh, there's uh, Now the Halloween scenes are on, but you get one scene where you get to see nearly all the houses in Mount Carmel. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't get up that early. I wouldn't know. There's no <laughs> way I can do it. i got to tape it if I want to see it at 730. Jeebers. Second down, about five yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. I should check with George and see if they can do it at 10, maybe. <laughs> Out of the eye formation. Drop back out in the flat to Veach or to Paracella. Face mask, first down, Red Tornadoes. Definitely a face mask call. Yeah, that's where it's going to go. And it was inadvertent. He was moving around so much. Guys reaching up to try to get a hold of him. Those little passes into the flat, they work, though. I mean, it's there. It's a nice quick drop back for Sebus and get him rolling with that pass, mm -hmm. Warren. Oh, yeah. Big penalty against the Colts there. Moves the ball down to the 36-yard line. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. Guys, at the end of the third quarter, 209 yards in total offense for Mount Carmel and 114 for Marion. So you see we went from 97 to 209. It's 120, 100, 112 yards in offense in the third quarter, so we did pick it up quite a bit. Sebus to ah, Van inside. Doren on the inside. Handoff flags on the play. 52, Harmonoski with the tackle. And also helped out by 38, which is Ryan, nope, Valiant. That's going against us. It's going to be a hold. No penalties in the, big penalties going to drive us back. First and 20, I guess. You got it. Now the ball's on the 44-yard line. Going to try Veach to the outside. He gets tied up in there and gains maybe about five yards. A little bit of roughhousing going on there in the, <laughs> in the huddle as we're <laughs> getting up. Boys will be boys. 10.53 left on the clock. Fake, Sebus rolls to his right, looks downfield at Van Doren, intercepted by number 12 on the interception, I guess his second, Nowitzki, I think, today. Neil Nowitzki. And he's just had a great football game, he really has. He's all over the place. That time the ball was a little bit past Van Doren. And Nowitzki was playing back and just wow. was in a good position they, to pick it off. That was a good statement right there, playing back, because they are. they On pass plays, they are going deep. Mm -hmm. they, they are looking for a deep pass, Jose. Yeah, they are, Bob. First down and 10, Marion the ball on the seven-yard line. Yeah, had uh, Shellhammer come in for uh, Sebus now. 
at safety. Roland Ride looking on a long one. Got him, Nowitzki! Shellhammer's the only one that can run him down, and a good move by Shellhammer to get him out of bounds, but wide open, Nowitzki. I'll and, tell you what, they saw that. pass play from the seven yard line. They saw them take Sebus out, and he went right at the new guy, right the first play, and that's coaching there. They called the play right at Shellhammer, knowing he had just gotten into the ball game. Perfect pass, and, and Shellhammer did a nice job of running him down before he scored. 63 yard pass play. That helps the offensive numbers for the Colts, doesn't it? Out of the split backfield. Gonna throw out into the flat. Good tackle made by number two, Nick Chesty, on number 21, Ryan Wortman. That's only about a two yard gain when, when you throw a pass like that and Chesty takes you down instantly. At the 10 minute mark in the football game. 21 Wortman gets split far left this time. Lights out of the eye, now he brings them back in. Going on the option. Pitches out and good play by the Red Tornado defense. 58 Sinkovic, one Meyer and 29 Paracella. Gain of about maybe three yards. Yeah, that's, that's about three. And so the option really hasn't been very productive here ever since the, the end of the first quarter or so. We kind of adjusted to that thing right away and really shut it down. Balliot and Ott lined up at split backs. Usually a passing situation. Big rush from Malakoski. Now Steve Zinkovich puts the burners on and Great job by Steve Sinkovich. He just ran him down. Yeah, yeah, and that's where speed really comes in handy in a linebacker. He think, just slightly couldn't get away. I think they wanted to hit that little delay over the middle again, and I think we we knocked off the uh, the wing back before he was able to get across the line, and that just broke up the whole play. Fourth down, ten yards to go. Wind's starting to whip up here. They're going with one back. They have trips set to the left side of the field Do the Colts. He's going to look to the left. Oh, big blitz. Cuff in there also. Malakoski on his feet and Jeff Evans. So the three big guys in to drop him. First down and 10 red tornadoes. Now Leitzel's shaking up again a little bit. He's leaving the field kind of gingerly. And again, he's, he's really taking a wearing in this game. I'm going to give him a lot of credit for standing up there and trying to throw the ball still. Now Cormelaria now, it's almost as if they can turn the, the defense up and down as they as they want now. You know, they, Mount Marion Catholic just starts to threaten on a big 63 yard pass play and now they drive them back 10 yards, you know, before they make another play, so. 8-11 left on the clock in this ball game. 21 nothing Red Tornadoes. Bailey, the ball carrier, gains about four yards up to the 41 yard line. Again, Mount Carmel area really has to do nothing else right now but just drive the ball on the ground and, and wear the game out and go home. I mean, that's really what they need to do. Matt Booker, number 50, into the game for the Red Tornadoes. Terry Meyer in the slot, and when he lines up over there, we're usually running over there, guys, to the right side. There it comes, pitch back to Veach. We're coming right. Veach still on his feet. First down at about the 47-yard line. He's run extremely tough today. He really has. I mean, there's, there's not a ton of breakaways there, but he's churning two and three and four yards out after the initial hit every time here today and really having a tough game uh, running right now. 131 yards on the day, on the day guys. And they're hard yards. Though. You know, sometimes the 131 yards is taken up in one shot sometimes, and, you know, you're almost there, but he's really earned every yard, and he just runs so tough when he gets start to get hit. You know, it takes two and three guys before he goes down. 7.20 left on the clock. Out of the split backs. Give the Veach off the right side. Good read that time. Coming in to make the stop for the Colts, number 71, Horvath. Gain of about two yards. Talk about the 
Second down, eight yards to go. Number eight, Mike Smith brings in the play for the Red Tornadoes. Split backs, usually a passing situation here. Sebas, it's gonna be a fake, but a good read that time by number 33, Joe Ott, and he puts a little extra yeah, on Ott, the tackle at the end. Joe Ott needs to get off the tackle once he makes it. That was, <laughs> you could pass on that kind of stuff. Actually wasn't a passing play, it was going to be a quarterback keep, it looked like. Read that really nice though. I mean, <laughs> somehow they saw that thing from the beginning. It went nowhere. Oh, I thought you meant I read it nice because I no. said it was going to be a. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not what I meant. <laughs> Third down and about 12 to go. Sebus rolls, looks downfield. Now to the short back, hits Veach and gets a good block close to a first down. He'll oh, fumble on the play. If that's a fumble, Marion's going to come up with it. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> I thought for sure they did. Can bring up a fourth down. We only had one shot of getting that ball back, and he must have done it because he's the only guy there. Look, he had six guys of blue jerseys get up at him. Fourth down and about two yards to go. <laughs> Sometimes that's the toughest play you make in the game, Jose. That's why you're on the ground fight for the Absolutely. for a fumble. Fourth down and about two, the Red Tornadoes go for it. Out of the power eye formation. Going to go to Beach and lots of room. This will be a touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Wow. They there all came up to see the quarterback sneak, I think, yep. and we just ran it right off the right side for a touchdown. That time we fooled even the Vitsky, who's been pretty good with that, but he got caught inside and lost any chance whatsoever, if he had one at all, to catch Veach. But nice play that time, and again, Veach whacking the numbers up again and showing you what kind of running back he really is. Five minutes on the clock, and the Red Tornadoes take a 27 to nothing lead. And this is a big extra point, ladies and gentlemen. This extra point will set the record here at Mount Carmel area if he makes it. Snaps back. Good snap by Els. Held by Paracel. It's up. He's done and it. And it's good. He's the done it, ladies and gentlemen. By number 58, Mike Sinkovic. There you have it, ladies and, and gentlemen. That is a long time record, Jose. Yes, it has. Yeah, it's 20, 26 years. And he now has 19 consecutive extra points. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, congratulations <laughs> to Mike Sinkovic. 19 straight extra points. You know, we've had a lot of good kickers over the years, too, guys, so he's in some great company. Well, I can't wait to go back and tell Wayne this. <laughs> yeah, what, maybe he planned this this day. That's why he's not here. <laughs> he's claiming his, his daughter's getting married, but he knew the record was going. <laughs> he couldn't bear to watch this one. 18 carries for 178 yards for Johnny Veach on the day. It's 10 yards a pop. I think you said it was a very quiet, hard yeah, it was running day. Right. A great day nonetheless. Two great long runs, though, for him for touchdowns, Jose. Yeah, 45, and the other one in the first half was 44, I think. Cinco with the crashing Ooh. kick. Picked up by 18, Barrasso. And he's going down. Tackled by 29, Paracella. Helped out by Van Duren, 27, 28, Bailey, and 26, Lentini. Uh, 28, 28 nothing now, 452 left in the game. The game is, is pretty much settled here. Right. Marion Catholic, I'm sure, wants to get some points on the board at least before they go home today. But Big Red, again, a, a game that we keep saying was kind of a slow motion game, you know, but I think it's just we're not used to playing Saturday afternoons. Try a draw play up the middle to Ott. Tackle made by 47, Steve Sinkovich. And really, cold. this stadium here is one of the very few stadiums left without lights in high school right now. It was to be that there were tons of them, you know, depending on where you were at. But there are very few stadiums that don't play at night any longer. This is one of the few we're still seeing. 4.30 on the clock. Marion with a second down and about two yards to go. 
Going to try Ballion off the right side, close to a first down at about the 25-yard line. Malakoski getting up off the bottom of the pile. Has a split backfield for the Colts. Going to throw. Leitzel with Cuffy around them. That one's not going anywhere. And get ready, because if Mount Carmel area takes the ball over on offense, I believe you're going to see the freshman Yasenchak come in and play quarterback. He's warming up on the sideline now. He's a big strapping guy, that one. And he is going to be fun to watch over the years. He's listed in at six foot, 190 pounds. But he looks bigger than that. You know, some guys look smaller, but he looks bigger than that. Second down, 12 yards to go. Gonna roll, Jeff Evans with the big rush, and Steve Zinkovich, Ooh. nope. Who was it? 58, Mike Zinkovich, Mike Zinkovich with the big hit. It, <laughs> yeah, looked, like a, a, it yeah. looked like a zero, the eight did. Yeah, 319 Mike left on the clock, big hit by Mike Zinkovich. Now this is never the situation you want to be in against this defense. I mean, this defense is, as everyone who's seen it knows, one of the best you're going to see in high school football. And to be in a position where you got to actually catch up is not the best play you want to play. You want to do so. You got to feel bad for Marion right now. Again, they all they want are some points right now. They know the game's out of reach. But uh, Leitzel, Leitzel played a courageous game. He really did. He had a good football game. Made some nice passes. Took some horrendous hits. Really did. He took a beating in this game and just kept standing back up and playing again. So take your hat off to him a little bit. The kids we talked about, uh, Nowitzki, he played a great football game for Marion, I think, uh, 71. And we talked about Horvath, another great football game on his side of the ball. So those guys, the, the kids that we heard about were the ones that were, were, they played to their potential. They played a good football game. Just too much talent on Big Red right now. Uh, there's some worry. I mean, obviously the concerns were how do we react off a loss last week? How do we react playing so many big games in a row, which is really a point to make it when you say you wonder if Big Red, you know, needs to kick it up. It's hard to kick it up after that many big games in a row. I mean, it's easy for us to sit up here and say it, but it's not that easy to do it. Leitzel, back to pass again. Looks over the middle, incomplete. And they didn't see it. The refs did not see the it. The ref doesn't know Bounced what to do. off the ground, and he never saw and it. There's a ref right there saying yeah. he, does, he doesn't look at it. He's shaking his head. Yeah. He doesn't know what the call was. <laughs> so it'll be a first down for the Ooh, Marion Catholic that was a That was a dandy call there. 308 left in the game. That one just slid right off the ground. He just didn't see it. I mean, he, and he was actually the guy in position to be watching it, and he missed it. Leitzel again over to this side. Big play by Chris Cuff and Malakoski to knock that one down. Second down, 10 yards to go. Cuff's gonna need some major surgery on his shirt when he gets it home today. His mother's not gonna be happy. There's like a giant rip underneath his arm almost all the way down to his waist. I mean, you can see it when he picks his arm up. Right now his mother's thinking, I'm only gonna wash it, but now I'm gonna have to sew that thing. <laughs> only Warren. Out of split backfield, passing situation for the Colts. Cuff with the big rush, he's held. Still makes a nice play, almost intercepted by Chesney. And there it is. I was going to say, that's got to be offensive <laughs> interference. <laughs> I mean, that had to be. <laughs> it's interference that took away his interception, though. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Chesney was, was I think was, he had a uh, beat on it. I think he was going to intercept it, to tell you the truth. Davitsky did all he could uh, to stop it and, and consequently picked up an uh, interference penalty. 2.57 left on the clock as the officials discuss the call. I'm not sure why they have to talk about it. I still think they're trying to figure out how the other guy missed that last pass. <laughs> well, he didn't come over. He never came over for this conversation. No, he, he just they're not even it. letting him come no. over here. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> they had a long talk with him in the car on the way home on that one. This will put the ball on about the 25-yard line. Second down and 25, 25. to go. Leitzel with the split backs. Tries a draw play. 
Barrasso comes up. Good tackle made by <laughs> Chesney after he ran through a couple people, and Chesney just cut him right at his ankle. Oh, you like that kid, though. You really do. He's just such a football player, you know? Everything he does is just what you want him to be doing. Fourth down and a punting situation for the Colts. Back for the Red Tornadoes are going to be Paracella and 25 Beach. <laughs> Snaps back, a little high snap, gets the kick away. Mickey Moreau's in there, did a job to nearly block it and goes out of bounds on about the 43-yard line. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. Is there 212 left? Is that what we're 212. 212. 212. And there you see him. The freshman quarterback has entered the game, as I told you earlier. Well, you got Yasenjek in the game. Booker will be in now. At the uh, center spot will be number 57, Brian Swaldy. Uh, 48 will be the in there, Chad Preslumsky. James Zublik will be the running back. Number 10, Mike Powell, come in at fullback. 55 also in there for the Red Tornadoes, which is Dave Shoppy. 70, Bartle will be in a tackle on the right side. Jeff Karpinski at 51, the right guard. Pitch back to Zublik. Takes it out around the left side, finds running room and gets about an eight yard gain. Prislumpsy comes off and also number 10, Mike Powell. And Hutko in the game now and he's coming to our near side there, isn't it? Yep. Yep, Hutko's in the game. Mickey Moreau's comes in at fullback. Gives the ball to Moreau's up the middle, first down, Red Tornadoes. Forty-five yard line, one thirty-six left on the clock. First down, number fourteen on the day for Mount Carmel. Give Coach Dukowski a, a, a little bit of credit here too. Unlike other teams that we've seen, right. he actually substituted everybody right. on his defensive side of the ball in the waning seconds here of the game. Pitch back to Zublik. Takes it out around the right side. Flags on the play, and we're going to have a hold on this against the Red Tornadoes. Either a hold or a clip. Yeah, there was too many guys in the backfield. You, you knew we were in trouble, but Zublik, on the other hand, made a great run. Winding down to about one minute and 13 seconds left in the ball game. First down and 15 yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. That's a little break there because the officials were moving a plastic bag off the field, guys. We have nothing to do with that either. <laughs> Yusanchak pitches back to Zublik out around the left side, and he stopped in on the tackle, Rich Rowe. Fifty seconds and winding down. Second down and long. Yasenchak inside handoff. Thirty. Exactly. I didn't see the number. That's thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Kerprich. 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 Kerprich, the ball carrier for the Red. I tornado. couldn't see the number as he came through. Nice run by Kerprich that time. And Coach Williams is getting everybody in the football game here before time runs out. 11 seconds. They'll get one more play here, the Red Tornadoes will. Pitches back to Zublik. 
and he's tackled, and that's going to be the ball game. Final score, the Red Tornadoes 28, the Marion Catholic Colts nothing. And as Jose does his stats, we'll sit here and talk a little bit, Warren. Not unusual when you come to Marion to have a game like this. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, I know we said it's 100 times, but it's not. It's always been a kind of Achilles heel to us to play up here in the afternoons. We played a good football team. They dropped the 4-2. and two. We move up to 5-1. and one. We... Uh, we did a lot of good things here today. A couple of things we were, we were sluggish in the first half, and that's you know that's going to be expected a little bit. Again, we remind you that when you play a schedule like we do, where you've got five you know really tough games in a row like we're playing, it's it's tough to get up for every game. And of course, now you know Marion. I don't know who they're playing next week, but I know it can't be a giant rivalry. Now, what do we do? We just get done this game and have to start preparing for the Spartans of North Schuylkill, who are going to come up here and try to tear everybody's head off as they usually do. Now, the good thing about them is we have them at home. Uh, they're not having quite the season that they've had in the past, but still a dangerous football team. Of course, Gino Capone, the football player. I mean, uh, you don't, you're not going to find anybody better than he is. So we got to try to contain him next week. And uh, we, had, we we looked down the schedule. I saw some, by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we saw some wild loosing guys here. Yep. Now, they, of course, they had to leave Wednesday to get here for this game, but <laughs> we'll be going, we'll be making that trip uh, towards the latter part of this season here. So we'll go to Jose. And what do you think happened today, Paul? Well, it was a two different halves of football. The first half was totally defensive, and the second half, the offense got it in, in sync, and uh, it's indicative by the stats. We had 97 total yards in the first half with 197 in the second half. Uh, for Mount Carmel, 46 rushing attempts for 273 yards, 3 of 10 passing for 33 yards for a total of 306 yards and 14 first downs. Indi individually, Johnny Veach, great day, 18 carries for 178 yards. Al Bailey, 7 for 28. Nick Sebus, 14 for 42. Zublik had 4 for 13. Uh, Moreau's 1 for 5. And Kerprich, 1 for 6. Receiving, Josh Paracella had 1 for 6. And Johnny Veach, 2 for 27. For Marion Colts, on the other hand, 29 rushing attempts for 30 net yards. That's just about what we've been averaging against yep. the good teams, especially by the first team defense. I think 72 or 73 yards by uh, Panther Valley, and that was against the second team early. But they, they just kept doing what they do all year. Passing has been indicative of what's happened in, in most games, too. 11, uh, 11 completions in 25 attempts for 173 yards for a total offense of 203 yards for the Marion Colts and a total of nine first downs. Uh, I think uh, the coach has to be pleased. Like you said, it's real hard getting up for all of these games. Saturday games have traditionally been a problem for yep. us or, or a question for us. And I think uh, Coach Williams just has to be happy to come out of here with a 28 nothing win. Highlight today, Mike Sinkovich, four consecutive extra points, 19 on the season. New all-time a record at Mount Carmel area, surpassing Glenn Adams, 1972. Way to go, Mike Sinkovich. Now we'd like to see him make 20. I'd like to see him go to 40. 40 yeah, I was right. going to say, why put a limit on this baby? Let's let him go all the way. Well, let's let him go all the way is right. Red Tornadoes exit the field here, and uh, good game for them. As we said, we, we were impressed by the second half, both offensively and defensively. Took Steve Sinkovich to get him rolling in that first half to, with his interception touchdown to get this Red Tornado team going. Well, his, his big interception and Chris Cuff's, Cuff's big sack Obviously, the momentum changer in this football game in the first half. Next week, North Google Spartans. Yep. We talked about it a little bit. We'll be again, there. a team that gets up for us all the time, and they'll be up again, ready to play the Red Tornadoes. But we go back to the friendly confines of the Silver Bowl. That's about it from here. I'm Bob Else. I'm Warren Altamore. Jose Gonzalez. And we enjoyed having Jose Gonzalez. Yes, we did. Thanks, Bob, but yes, I think did. I'll be on his side. You're, you're, <laughs> you're invited to any game again, but you can pick it. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>